Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics. Today we're diving into 3G, 4G and 5G networks and explaining what the go is with spectrum management, letting you get back to your IoT projects more confident and grounded. So, mobile networks are often referred to today as 3G, 4G or 5G, and the G stands for generation and a new generation of cellular standards has appeared approximately every 10th year since 1G systems first came to be in the early 1980s. Each new generation is characterized by a new frequency band, higher data rates, and a non-backward compatible transmission technology. The first commercial 3G networks were introduced in mid-2001, and it is worth knowing that they're gonna to cease to be used by 2024. When it comes to real world usage, 3G is around two megabits per second download speeds. 4G is around 20 to 50 megabits per second, which is 10 times faster, and 5G can apparently reach 1200 megabits per second if the stars are correctly aligned and you're the only one using the service. However, the real world usage is around 100 to 400 megabits per second. Truthfully, they are just marketing terms and not technical terms at that. One quick look at the wiki page for mobile phone generations demonstrates how not black and white these terms are. The two main narrowband cellular standards that you will often see used are the NB-IoT and the LTE CAT-M1. This can effectively be simplified to 4G LTE technology. So why all the confusing technicalities? It comes down to the history of the way the spectrum has been and is managed. To clarify, the spectrum is a continuous range of electromagnetic radiation waves. This extends from the longest radio waves to the shortest ones like gamma rays or radiation and x-rays. The radio frequency spectrum, which is what IoT devices and mobile phones work with, sits in the lower part of the spectrum. Spectrum management is the process of regulating the use of radio frequencies with the intent to promote efficient use and improve society. So maybe now you can see where this is gonna go. The term radio spectrum typically refers to the full frequency range from three gigahertz all the way to 300 gigahertz, which is just a massive range that may be used for wireless communication. Increasing demand for services such as mobile telephones and many others has required changes in the philosophy of spectrum management, such as nowadays there's a massive demand for wireless broadband and the rapid expansion of the wireless internet services. And each country has their own different philosophy. Most countries consider IRS spectrum as an exclusive property of the state. The IRS spectrum is seen as a national resource, much like water, land, gas, and minerals. RF is reusable, however, unlike those other ones. The purpose nowadays for most of this spectrum management is to mitigate the radio spectrum pollution and maximize the usable radio spectrum. The military, scientific pursuits, space missions, consumers, businesses, airplanes, everyone wants a slice of this radio frequency pie. So this landscape becomes very complicated. Now, I'll throw up this infograph of the Australian radio frequency spectrum allocation chart, just to show the complexity. And this is just for one country. There is a huge amount of factors that further go into deciding these allocations, such as the distance the radio wave can travel, whether the wave can penetrate through trees or into buildings, the cost of equipment to transmit and receive, which generally increases as the frequency increases, the longer wavelengths need larger antennas, but they can travel longer distances than short wavelengths, and furthermore, different services need different frequencies with different characteristics. So the idea of these organizations, like the Australian Communications and Media Authority, is to match the needs of a service with the right characteristics. This makes for the best use of the spectrum. The result is that some bands are more valuable and in much higher demand than others. So hopefully this has cleared up some of the reasons for the complexity and also some of the physics of the IoT networks. So with that, until next time, stay cozy.